Well, hey guys, happy Sunday. I just woke up, got dressed in some comfy shorts and a tank top. My hair has a life of its own. I had a dream last night. I must have been waiting for a flight or something of that sort. All of a sudden I realized I didn't have my purse and I pan you know, I was panicked retracing my steps trying to find my purse. There were like people, and you know how in a dream people seem familiar and then all of a sudden it's like, who are you? People are like, why are you so worried about that? I was like, because I'm not gonna be able to check into my flight without my ID plus, you know, hello, my wallet and everything. No one was willing to help me out. <laughs> So I pointed out before that this has Matrixel in it, Matrixel 3000, two peptides, but one helps with inflammation and one theoretically may help with boosting collagen, but I really just think they work by hydrating the skin. But not a lot is known about like what the best concentration conditions for peptide delivery into the skin. And in cosmetics, which is where you're going to find peptides, they never going to really disclose the percentage. And even if they do, you know, what does that tell you as a consumer? Nothing really. Um, it doesn't really tell you that it's an effective percentage because we don't really know that. It doesn't really tell you that it's getting in because the background formula could ultimately totally influence that. You know, azelaic acid, for example, the prescription stuff, 20% azelaic acid cream doesn't penetrate uh, as well as 15% azelaic acid gel. Now they both can work, they're both effective, but my point is the vehicle, the, the, the stuff accompanying the active ingredient definitely influences its stability, of course, and whether or not it gets in. So this is just one of those unknowns when you're talking about cosmetic products. And so when someone's like, well, what's the best peptide serum? And you're going off of largely anecdotes because you're not going to get the level of disclosure in terms of formulation. You're not going to get comparative trials. I think I'm going to come in today with the Sun Project Skin Relief. I'm almost finished with this. Now sunscreen, on the other hand, they're required to demonstrate efficacy um, by, you know, MED testing to determine the SPF. A lot of people will try and make assumptions about a sunscreen based on the percentage of active ingredients. And I've said this before, that is not, you shouldn't do that because the formula overall influences the final protection that the product gives you, not the percentage of active ingredients. Like you can have a formula that is, you know, I don't know, 10% zinc oxide, and it may actually, be less effective than a lower percentage because it all depends on like the size of the zinc, how it's, you know, the coatings, other things that are in the formula, the spread on the skin, because you can have a high percentage of zinc, but if it all clumps together, it's not going to give you very good protection. You know, it's like trying to figure out how spicy a chili is by how many jalapenos are in it. It doesn't necessarily tell you anything because you could have a recipe with three jalapenos but the person took the seeds out. Whereas you could have a recipe with one jalapeno, seeds in, plus they added stuff like citrus to bring out the capsaicin spice and enhance that, or maybe they've added other spices to enhance the heat level. You see what I'm saying? Like a lot goes into it, the final spice level of your sunscreen. Oh, I need to hydrate and caffeinate. In other exciting news, look who got a facial. I clean the inside really well of my, I mean, I always clean it out, but I like, I got rid of all of the hard water buildup in there and it looks so pretty and shiny. All right, enough, enough. Let's fill her up. Also clean my faucet head. on coffee hold temp. Last night, I got my Indulge Right order. I have this, I get this all the time. It's so good. It's a caramel, a dairy-free vegan caramel sauce. It's sweetened with allulose instead of sugar, which is like a low glycemic sweetener. It also has erythritol in it, by the way, but it's really, really good. This one has like a chai spice flavor to it. I love having this as an apple dip. Highly recommend Indulge Right. It's also really good to put it 
in a pan with pecans and heat it up with the pecans, melt it all together. Um, like a pecan pie. I'm telling you, it's delicious. So this is back to Raven's Brew. Look at that beautiful bean action. Love the sound of the air being squished out. So I used my blender last night and I didn't realize you can also put this in the dishwasher, the blade. You can put the pitcher and the blade in the dishwasher and the lid. I am all about that dishwasher life. Yeah, I really hate washing things by hand. But so far, this has been working out really well for me. It does a good job blending up the ice, making smoothies really nice and thick and, well, smooth. So, you guys, the other weekend, I watched Fatal Attraction with Glenn Close. Oh my gosh, you need to watch that. I know they're remaking it. I think, I want to say on Netflix or something. Um, but you need to watch the original one. It is so good. Glenn Close is so good in this movie. Oh, man. Yeah, highly recommend. Oh, look at the froth. finished my weekly makeup brush cleaning routine and I always get the biggest kick out of like what the water looks like like I don't know how much comes out <laughs> these are the current makeup brushes I guess I've been using most commonly this past week at least I've had these elf makeup brushes for like two years now and they do the job well they're pretty affordable I mean elf as a brand as a whole is very affordable and I also love these BK beauty brushes these were gifted to me speaking of elf um, I wanted to update you guys. I decided to buy this and give it a try because um, y'all have recommended it in a couple of videos and it's actually really good. The Elf Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. It does have fragrance in it. The fragrance is pretty light and of course you're going to be rinsing this off so it's not as though you're leaving it on the skin to cause irritation. Of course if you're allergic to fragrance you would want to avoid but this really gets the job done and it was not expensive. So if you're someone who's looking for a good drugstore cleansing balm, I would highly recommend this one. The other one that I like is the CeraVe makeup removing cleansing balm. Just talking drugstore, American drugstore cleansing balms. This one's pretty good too, but this one kind of smells like butter, which I sort of like, but if you're not into that, go with this. And this one's a little softer, easier to scoop out. One thing about the CeraVe one that kind of gets a little annoying is that because the label is on there like a sticker you can see it starts to bubble up yeah this thank you farmer sunscreen you know it's not my holy grail korean sunscreen by any means i like it i've been enjoying it unlike some american sunscreen zero burny eyes with this like i was just uh, I filmed the video for you guys. It should be up. We're reviewing some new sunscreens from the drugstore, like the, the Copper Tone Every Tone sunscreen. I loved it, but man, it was like fire in my eyes. This Thank You Farmer put it all around my eyes, and it's like I don't even I don't even feel like I have sunscreen on me. Came in here to Target. I tried this dress on, but it's a little bit too big up top. They're on sale. Isn't it cute otherwise, though? You can adjust it here on the side, make it... We're cinched if you want. This one's really cute, except it's kind of plungy in the neckline, but it's got the little poof sleeves. It's flowy. All right, and then this one's really cute too. This color, I thought it'd be fun for summer. I wear it with my little sandals from uh, Abercrombie that I wear all the time. Y'all know I hate shopping carts that are like oversized, but check out how svelte the Joann's shopping cart is. It's got like a little cup holder here. This Joann's is still pretty new, so this is like, this is like a nice, look, look, it's even ergonomic. That's what I'm talking about. Not like those ratchety shopping carts that Walmart has with the sticky wheel. Don't even get me started. Easter stuff on clearance. A carrot mug. 
Oh, I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. These outdoor rugs on sale, 40% off. Red, white, and blue pizzazz. I like these wooden flower, I don't know what they're called. They appeal to me, I think they're nice looking. Oh, check this out. Y'all know me and drinks and cups, like, I just need to rein it in, but this is really tempting me because look how cute this is. It's a glass, but the topper, is the topper like a juicer, right? For lemon juice? You could make lemonade right in your glass with a lemon or a lime. You could make limeades. Look how cute that is, like a tiki, like a tiki drink. Oh man, these are, I, I kind of want one. 40% off. Ah. Oh. This is the latest from Cricut, a mug maker, mug press. Create pro quality mugs. I wonder if you could do biggie sized. I guess you have to get the, I'm sure you could do any size, but y'all know me, I need a big mug. <laughs> the size of mug I need would not even fit in that machine. Oh, uh, here's one for the easy press. I like to do shoes. This is fancy. A light board. Illuminates for detailed cutting. I always get sucked into this Cricut stuff, but like, it's a serious investment. It's like, what am I gonna make with this? Like one hat and then I'm gonna probably mess it up and get frustrated. <laughs> purchased this dress I just thought the color was so fun I don't have anything this color and for $17.60 I just thought that was a good price and I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it yeah I plan on pairing it with my cute little Abercrombie sandals that I have been getting so much use out of these they go with tons of stuff I shared these in my April favorites video anyway yeah I'm gonna wear these with this dress I think it'll be cute it's like a good summer base staple you know you can accessorize it like I had this cute bracelet that I've had for a couple of years I got it from I think the accessory concierge I thought that would be cute with it yeah I'm excited for bright summer colors speaking of summer colors I have been loving this top that I got at the Goodwill a few weekends ago um, it just came out of the washing machine, so I have it here air drying. I just washed it on the delicate cycle. I honestly think it's a pajama top, but I am not mad at that. It's so cute and flowy. Yeah, this is the other top that I got at the Goodwill. It's Carl Lagerfeld. You've got the Eiffel Tower sprinkled in there. It's like a charm bracelet, right? It's also a little Western slash rodeo couture, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't know, something about the pockets and this sort of looks like a rope, even though I think it's a, supposed to be a charm bracelet. As I said in that vlog though, these were not inexpensive. Like, Goodwill is not cheap <laughs> by any means. I think if you wanna go hunting for uh, secondhand clothes to get deals. Maybe stick to more like local um, charity shops and things of that sort. You know, uh, resale shops uh, where you can get secondhand things. Um, consignment, that's what I'm talking about. You, maybe you can find better deals. I don't know, don't ask me. But like if you're seriously on a budget, I don't know why you would go to Goodwill because the prices there are not much different than like Target or Old Navy. And a lot of the clothing is exact same. <laughs> Well, hey guys, I am all moisturized and what have you out of the shower. You know, the summer months are coming up and one thing that can really be a problem for a lot of people, I mean, it's basically summer here. I think I've said this <laughs> recently. One thing that can really be a problem for people in the warmer months is heat rash. Now I have a video all about heat rash. It's called miliaria. Basically, it's a rash that happens when, like the name implies, you get overheated and you have trapping of sweat in the sweat gland, the eccrine sweat glands, and that can occlude the outflow of sweat and impair how you cool your body. And so it can be little, little clear fluid-filled blisters called miliaria crystallina, um, or it can get inflamed, and you can even develop pus within the bumps, sterile, meaning not infectious, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it can really be a problem for people and the skin becomes very sensitive when you have miliaria. Most common scenarios for developing miliaria are like newborn babies that are swaddled, get overheated, can develop it. People who are in the hospital and lying in bed all day. The hospital rooms are not, don't have the best circulation. They can easily get overheated and have trapping of sweat up against the, up against the skin leading to this problem. And it really can get in the way of um, like body temperature regulation and that sort of thing. People develop it, especially here in Houston, you know, because it's so humid. Um, try and keep the skin, to prevent it, try and keep the skin well aerated. Wear loose, breathable clothing. Get out of sweaty clothing as best you're able because that trapping of sweat up against the skin can lead to the eruption of heat rash. Not to mention, put you at risk for developing a folliculitis sweat trapped up against the skin you know it erodes at the barrier or two and um when the follicles are kind of impaired then you can get bacteria trickling in um so yeah try and wear loose fitting clothing keep the area cool and dry and when you develop the heat rash avoid heavy moisturizers actually because you know moisturizers are great for dry skin but when you have the trapping of sweat the last thing you want to do is put anything that is going to further contribute to the occlusivity of sweat evaporating um, they do make drying lotions cooling lotions that um, have low molecular weight alcohol and so that actually can be a beneficial thing because what it does is it evaporates and pull, you know helps with evaporative cooling and, and the other thing is to get like a little fan, run it over the skin. Yeah, it can definitely be an issue. And folliculitis are definitely issues that you know, can be more common in the, in the warmer months. Y'all, I've been trying out some sunscreens for you guys behind the scenes per usual. It may or may not be up at this point, but I really have wanted to love this Copper Tone Everytone. Um, unfortunately for me on the face, while I liked the way it looked, it burned my eyes um, fairly quickly after applying it. Well, like within a few minutes. Like I put it on, loved it, and then I got the burny eyes. So it's a no-go for the face, but I really like the consistency and it's very fast absorbing, non-greasy. I'm really thinking it's going to be a great option for the summer as a body sunscreen. It's water resistant. Um, speaking of, you know, not feeling overheated, that, that would be a good one because heavy sunscreens can really contribute to, well, heat rash in a sense by slowing down the evaporation of sweat and potentially occluding the sweat ducts. So that's a good one. But, um, the one that I really, really, really love doesn't burn my eyes as a body sunscreen that is similar in consistency, but a lot more expensive is the La Roche-Posay Melt-In Sunscreen Milk. That one is, is really great for sweaty conditions because it is fast absorbing and it doesn't, similar to that, it doesn't leave a cast. Now, my the sunscreen that I discovered last summer and I have recently repurchased and will be leaning into as well this year is the Gold, Gold Bond, the Bondi Sands fragrance-free, sunscreen that does not sting around my eyes it's like nice and moisturizing so that's a good one for for i use it on the face and the body to make one for the face specifically but honestly it's no different than the body one and i don't get it like i said i don't get any stinging around the eyes with that one let me know if those of you have tried it do you find that it stings around the eyes for me it does not it's so weird like you know chemical sunscreens as far as the active ingredients they're not that different you know in terms of the active ingredients right but man there's uh, there's a lot of variability in terms of the sting ability around the eyes and i don't know if some sunscreens other inactive ingredients make the stinging more of an issue or what and the water resistance factor should help because it shouldn't run into your eyes but somehow it, it makes its way there or at least with this one you know on the on the flip side the croche shimmer I don't get the burning eyes. I really think sunscreen manufacturers, they should nail down what makes a sunscreen most burny eye-ish and try and try and reduce that. Because I would when I bought this, before I tried it, I was thinking to myself, I bet this is gonna burn around the eyes. I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised that it didn't. I thought it would burn around the eyes because you know it's a chemical sunscreen they often do. Plus, 
it has ferulic acid. So I was thinking that would amp up the stingability, if you will. But much to my surprise, this is very hydrating, pleasure to put on. But uh, yeah, it's a little rundown on some sunny screens. <laughs> I know, me being a dork, big surprise. Anyway, y'all, I hope you're having a great weekend when you're watching this or whenever you're watching it. I hope you are doing swell. If you enjoyed this vlog, make sure you come back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time for tomorrow's vlog. Lots of skincare chatting. If you hate vlogs, you have no interest in random bits and bobs of my life, then tune in Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I always have dedicated skincare content, whether it be me shopping in store for skincare and talking about ingredients or talking about a specific skin issue, skin condition, answering your questions about topical medications. I mean, we cover a lot under the umbrella of skincare. I hope you guys enjoyed this video though. Thank you for making it to the end. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.